Hey guys, welcome back to another outcheaping YouTube video. Today's video, we're going to be tackling the heater core in my 99 Jeep Cherokee. This has been one of the most requested videos for me to do, and mine finally bit the dust and started leaking. So today, we're going to be tackling the whole job from start to finish on replacing the heater core. And while we're in there, we're going to replace a couple other components as well, since it is kind of hard to get to. So we're going to be replacing the blower motor and the AC evaporator core that's located in the HVAC box that we'll be removing today to replace our leaking heater core. So we got a lot to work to get this replaced, so let's jump right in and get started started. Alright, so let's quickly go over the components that we're going to be replacing today. Number one is our heater core right here. This is a new aftermarket replacement one. Um, this one is actually aluminum. If you have the original one in your Jeep, it's going to be made of copper. As of today, you can't find a uh, Mopar replacement one um, that's made of copper. I think they just discontinued it, but aluminum should be just as fine. Um, it's going to be a lot cheaper as well. This one right here is a Spectrum Premium. I run their radiators and I haven't had any issues, so I'm going to trust in going with this. We also have the evaporator core, which is for our AC system that sits inside of our HVAC box behind the dashboard that we're also going to be replacing. Since we're in there, we're going to replace all the components um, so that way if this ever goes bad after, we don't have to go and do this project again. And then lastly, we also have a brand new blower motor that we're going to be replacing as well. Mine still works, but it does uh, make a lot of noise when it is cold outside, starts squealing until it's all warmed up. So went ahead and replaced that. I forget the brand on this, but I'll post all the links in the description below for all these that I'm using here today. Other than that, you're just going to need some simple hand tools to do this job, nothing too special. One thing you need to do beforehand, if your AC is still charged up, is you're going to want to take it to someone that has a vac pump or a shop or something like that and extract all the refrigerant in your um, AC system because you will need to remove some AC lines by replacing this con Denser, um, but even if you're still just doing the heater core, the whole entire HVAC box has to be removed, so those AC lines need to come off. Other than that, it's just a lot of uh, labor into the whole process, so I'm going to jump right in. We're going to pop the hood and start disconnecting the lines underneath the hood. So one thing I did want to go over quickly um, is just a quick diagnostics to make sure you actually have a bad heater core, so you're not just doing this job for nothing. A few things you might notice is if you have antifreeze on your passenger side floorboard, um, that's a good indication that you have a leaking heater core. Um, for me, I've actually noticed that just being steaming out of the dash, um, took this to work and then the windows on a cool morning started fogging up. It smelled like antifreeze inside and even with the uh, blower motor off, I still had um, active steam rolling out of the vents. So I know that this thing just sp sprung a leak and it's just been getting progressively worse because I think I smell coolant maybe a few months ago too. but it's getting worse now and then also if you're consuming some coolant in your reservoir you notice this thing going down and all the other systems on your cooling system check out it's most likely that heater core so starting underneath the hood um, we only have a few things to do here most of the work is going to be inside of the cab um, but we're going to start off by removing our heater hoses there are two hoses that are right here that go to the firewall um, i had these guys replaced when i did the front end rebuild on this when it hit a deer over the winter if you want to check that out i have a video down in the link below Another thing that I recommend, if these heater hoses are original, I recommend replacing them um, with some uh, replacement ones that are already molded into the shape. But we just got a couple hose clamps. We're gonna remove those, put something underneath the vehicle because you will have a little bit of coolant that comes out. Um, and then also we have our AC refrigerant lines that go in right here um, that we will need a quick disconnect tool. Um, I'll put that in the link down below if you don't have one. Um, I recommend getting something that's uh, aluminum or steel um, the plastic ones don't really work too well on these uh, tight fittings right here and they just kind of a, more of a pain in the butt to work with. But once we get uh, those four lines, we got two AC lines, two heater core lines, um, we're going to jump into the cab and start doing the dash removal. And then once that is out of the way, we will come back into here because we have some bolts going through the firewall that keep that HVAC box mounted on there. Alright, so I'm going to start with the heater core hoses over here. If you have the factory lines, you probably still have the factory um, pinch clamps. I just have um, adjustable hose clamps that are on here. So I'm going to loosen this up. I got a pan underneath to catch all the fluid that comes out. I'm just going to use a seal pick to kind of break that bond against the heater core because it's kind of stuck on there. I'm 
actually just going to take these heater core hoses, push them up and out of the way for now. There we go. We also do have a vacuum line that kind of goes in through here. So I'm going to disconnect that. That's what activates all of your blend doors and everything like that. Just a little vacuum left in that. And then now I'm going to tackle the AC lines. They have these metal clips that are over here. Um, that kind of little safety clips to hold it in place. Um, once again, make sure your AC system is uncharged at this point. Um, like I said earlier in the video, um, otherwise you probably won't be able to get this off because the pressure kind of holds this connection together. These are the aluminum um, line separators right here. I like using these over the plastic ones. You just fit them in, fit them into that connection. It's going to pull back that spring and then you should be able to pull this out. Looks like I had a little bit of refrigerant in there. Not too much though. So that line on the right is going to be a 5 8 and then the one on the left is a little bit bigger. That looks to be a 3 quarter. Looks like we got a little separation on that other one, but since this dryer is kind of attached and I'm too lazy to unbolt it, I'm just going to kind of push on the other lines and help separate that a little bit. There we go. Doesn't matter if we damage the old core since we're removed or since we're replacing it anyway. But that should be good for now. Once we remove the HVAC box, it's going to pull out from the inside and separate that even more. I did also remove the EVAP perch solenoid that was right here just so it's a little bit easier to work in. Um, that's just a couple vacuum lines and a connector right there as well. And I'm also going to disconnect the battery on this just because we are going to be removing some electrical plugs possibly underneath the dash so um, it's always good practice just to remove it um, in case anything uh, shorts out and since we got airbag wires that we're going to be disconnecting as well so let's take that ground and leave it there for now. But now we're at a point where we can go ahead and jump on the inside and start taking apart some of the interior to access that HVAC box where our heater core lies in. All right, so now that we're in the inside here, let me give a quick overview on what all needs to come out of here and uh, what all needs to get detached because there's a lot of confusion on what people say that the entire interior needs to get ripped out. And I'll let you know right now that is not true. You only need to remove a certain amount of components, um, not have to overdo it. So first starting here, you can leave your seats in here, but you just want to make sure that you put them all the way in the rear position so that way you have as much room as possible. The center console will need to come out. Um, the trim panel here, on top of your dash um, and then your your top of your dashboard over here that's all clipped into place pretty much that needs to come out because we have some bolts on the top of the dashboard that we need to get at to undo we also have bolts underneath the dashboard kind of going where the kick panel is so we'll have to rem remove those uh, plastic kick panels as well um, and then i think we might need to remove um, our glove box and some of the panels down here as well i'm just kind of recalling from the last time i did this on my silver jeep but we'll know once we get that far. Um, I know for sure that the steering column, we'll just need to unbolt it from the dash and let it sit down. We don't want to remove that entirely because what we're going to end up doing is having the dashboard loose and we're going to kind of lean it out of the way. So peel it away from the passenger side so we can access that plastic HVAC box, which is right here behind the passenger side airbag. Um, once we get this moved out of the way, then we can access that box and remove that from the vehicle. And once that's removed from the vehicle, that gets split open and then we can replace our um, components on the inside. So I'm gonna get started on some of the simple stuff. We'll remove the center console, some of this plastic stuff around here. Most of it is all Phillips or just standard uh, 13 or 10 uh, millimeter hex uh, bolts holding all of this stuff into place.
got our rear vent. I'm just gonna remove that as well. You can just pop this guy out by pulling it underneath. It's all clipped into place. And to pull this piece off, we actually do remember need to pull off this bottom uh, bottom knee panel underneath the steering column. Once that's out, this should be able to pull straight out, clipped in on the top. Then we also have this uh, metal plate behind here. We'll remove that. Looks like someone was in here. Well, actually, this was the heater core on this thing was replaced before by the previous owner by the dealer, but it looks like the dealer just stuck a weird bolt through here, so that looks like it could be a 10 millimeter. got one, two, three, and four or five Phillips holding this top dashboard piece in place. We'll undo that and then the rest should just be clipped in. Make sure you hang on to your hardware so you know where everything goes. If you need to, you can label bags on which uh, hardware goes with which component. I like there's actually a few more screws down here as well, just more Phillips. All right, so to remove this, we got a rubber boot that we can separate underneath here. I'm gonna put the steering column all the way down, and then we're gonna pull straight out. And then push the headlight switch in, and we have to pop it through the hole that's on here as well. Actually, I think one thing we need to do, I forgot, is we got these plastic shroud that's around the back of the steering column behind the steering wheel. We're gonna to want to remove that as well. Forgot that has to come off first. So we got some more Phillips screws going in from the bottom. I think we have one, I think we got three of them that are in here. So we're gonna go ahead and pull those out. We should have had one more in the way back there, actually three of them but it looks like whoever was in here before then replace that back one, which is hidden a little bit further. But with this bottom piece drops out, and then we should be able to pop this guy out, kind of just move it around the lever for the tilt steering. There we go, a little tight fit on that one. Now we should be able to take this out. There we go. So now this top dash piece needs to come out. I'm pretty sure it should pop down and clipped into place, so we're just going to gently pry up on it. And then we got clips in the back, we're going to pull straight towards us. So now with that out of there, that exposes a bunch of 10 millimeter bolts along this edge that hold the top part of the dashboard in place. All right, so with that top dashboard out of the way, I'm gonna go ahead and actually remove all the top bolts right here, and we'll just kind of work our way down. Um, so we got a total of six fasteners. Um, the ones that are in the middle, they are uh, 10 millimeter nuts, and then we got two bolts on either side. They're all gonna be 10 millimeter heads. So I'm gonna go ahead and start removing those. I just got a swivel on a 10 millimeter socket, and we should be able to get these guys out. So hopefully you guys can see that, but the next thing that we're gonna be working on is removing the steering column. We're not gonna be totally removing it, but at least just loosening it up from the dashboard. So we got four 13 millimeter nuts. You can see one here, one on the other side, and then we got two back there. So I got a deep socket with a swivel on there and we'll get these guys out. Now once we get all these out just keep in mind that this will drop down so 
So I'm going to pull down on the steering wheel and then we should be able to pull out just like that so it's off the studs. Don't pull any further because you don't want to disconnect your steering shaft. So we're just going to leave that sitting on top of that driver's side seat just like that. All right, so working our way down, we have our kick panels that are on the inside here. I'm missing some fasteners, but you'll have a 11 millimeter um, hex nut that's inside of this uh, screw boss right here and then also um, a Phillips screw holding it in where the rest of the trim panel is um, where your door sill is but that's missing for mine so I'm just gonna pop this out of here and so the bolts that we're gonna be needing to remove down here um, it should be underneath this kick panel here um, we should have a 15 millimeter um, hex nut um, that's holding that into place this one on here um, it's been rattling forever and this guy right here, the uh, nut on the inside actually broke off. It's supposed to be a welded nut that holds that in place and this thing is all loose. But since it is loose enough and this isn't a uh, just a hole, it is a slot on the dashboard here, it should be able to come out. So we're gonna leave that guy like that. I'm gonna do the same thing to the other side. And honestly, we probably just need to loosen it up just a little bit because that's gonna help uh, when we reinstall the dashboard to have it just kind of a hook onto there instead of trying to hold the dashboard in place and feed in the bolt. So I'm going to leave this side out and then I'll go on the other side, um, break that free and just have it most of the way out, but not all the way out. This you can see a little bit better how that slot is. So we'll just go ahead and break this guy free. This is actually going to be a 13 millimeter, not a 15. I misspoke. All right, so then the last two main nuts holding this into place are gonna be located under here, right behind the shifter. Those are also gonna be 13 millimeters, so we'll pull those guys out. And actually, it looks like we'll need to remove this entire bracket just because of the way that it's behind it. So we got two more 13 millimeter nuts on the transmission tunnel. Those swivels aren't impact rated. I had that come apart on me. I'll just get in here with a ratchet wrench and finish up the rest of the way. Now I can take this bracket and remove it as well. All right, so now we're at the point where the dashboard is pretty much loose and it's just hanging up on the studs that are on the top here and then also resting where the kick panel bolts are where they're loose down there. So now I'm going to attempt to kind of pull this out of here. Um, we're not going to completely remove it from the vehicle since we still have electrical wires and plugs in the back side, which we still might need to disconnect at least on the passenger side. We'll see if we get lucky. Otherwise, we're going to have to start removing some miscellaneous um, small things. But overall, this should be um, completely loose now. So I'm going to kind of lift up and out towards me so it gets off of these studs. As you can see, looks like the dash just fell out. So now I'm gonna take this and we're going to pull the passenger side up and out of the way. So I got a bungee cord that I could put on one of the mounts over here in the corner. I'm gonna tie it up to the passenger side grab handle. So that way the dashboard's kind of angled and we should be able to get at the HVAC box. All right, so I got the dashboard up and out of the way and I have a bungee cord kind of holding it. And this is as far back as it really needs to go as long as the bottom of the dashboard is by the uh, front of the seat over here with the seat all the way back. That should give us plenty of room to be able to get this HVAC box, which is this plastic box right here out of the vehicle. So a couple of things I had to undo um, as I was pulling this back. One of those being our main vacuum um, line attachment right here. All these colors of different vacuum lines. There's just a connector right here. We're gonna undo that and that will help separate it. And then also we have our AM FM antenna right here. Had to undo the clip that's down located in there and then it has a um, attachment point. So I was able to pull that out and out of the way. 
Then I also have a couple of miscellaneous wires right here um, for some aftermarket accessories. I had it zip tied to the harness underneath, so I just cut those zip ties and I was able to pull them out with not having to uh, mess with any of the wires. So some other things we're gonna need to remove before this box comes out is we have um, this plastic kind of a shield down here. Um, a bunch of wires are kind of snapped into it. We got some uh, eight millimeter um, screws that kind of hold it in. There should be a total of four of them. This one's kind of missing on the corner over here, but there's one here and then two underneath. Pull this down. And then also all this electrical connectors, they're just kind of hung up on the box here just to uh, be snapped into place. Um, I think most of them we can just unclip out of the way and then we should be uh, free to go. All right, so that guy's loose. Looks like we got this connector right here. I'm just going to pry this off of here with the Christmas tree hook. can take that out of the way. Now under here, this white uh, PCC right here, this is our uh, blower fan resistor. So we're gonna undo the electrical connector here. So we'll pop back that red safety clip. Now we can pinch it, pop that out of place. Now we got a relay right here. Just gonna pop that out of place. And then we got this green plug. That can actually slide up, and then that just snaps in just like that. So this wire right here, it kind of disappears behind there. This actually goes to our fan blower, which once we get this box out a little bit, we should be able to disconnect it from the back side of this box. Then we also have a wire going over here to our blend door. If you have a 99 and up Cherokee, you're gonna have an automatic blend door in here. If it's uh, 98 and down, you're gonna have a cable driven blend door that you'll just have to remove the cable. All right, so that wire was able to unclip that from that uh, actuator that's underneath there and pull that through since the wiring harness is gonna stay with the vehicle. So now we're at the point where we have everything um, detached that we can do up here. So we're gonna go back to the engine bay and remove the fasteners that hold this HVAC box to the firewall. And then this whole box should be able to come out. All right, so for removing the HVAC box from the firewall, we have, I believe, five nuts um, on the studs that we need to remove. Um, and you can kind of see them come through and it's actually kind of tied into where this uh, AC dryer is. So we got two right here, one on the top, one down below. Then we also have one over here on the back of the engine and one even lower right behind the cylinder head. And it looks like I mine that there's a big old hole there. So whoever did this last must have had some issues and just kind of cut that out or something. So, and then we also have one over here by our blower motor that we're gonna have to remove. So these are gonna be 7 16 head nuts. So I'm gonna take a wrench or a ratchet, whatever combination is easier and start to break these free. I put a little bit of penetrating oil on the threads, so uh, hopefully it should come off easily. This one is so far. All right, so problem with this fastener, which you might find in your sense, the resistance to break free this nut is too much, or it's a little bit higher than what it would be threaded on the other side into the HVAC box. So that is actually unscrewing instead of the nut. So hopefully I can remove the fastener once it's out and then take the nut off in a vise and then clean up the threads and then reinstall the stud back onto the box. You can already see that's loose, so we'll go back to the inside and pull out this HVAC box. All right, so this might be a little hard to see since I need to be here where the camera normally is, but I should be able to pull out on this HVAC box. There we go, it's starting to come along. So now I gotta keep in mind my wire for my blower motor. I should be able to disconnect that. All right. Got that wire out. Now let's squeeze this out of here. All right, so here we have our HVAC box and now it's time to pull the components that are inside here. So what we need to do is actually split this box into half and you can kind of see there's a seam going along here. 
and there's a bunch of 8mm fasteners holding it down into place as well as a bunch of these metal clips that we just need to push up just like that and to get that out of here. Um, but before we do that, I'm going to start by removing our blower motor. We're going to get that out of there and then we'll have to remove a few other components like this foam gasket or whatever is restricting us from um, opening this up. So I've got some 8mm screws holding this blower motor in. I'm going to pull those guys out and there's three of them for this blower motor. And we should be able to pull that out just like so. Then I'm also going to remove this piece right here, this foam piece. Um, I don't have a replacement one, so it's going to be very careful on removing it that I don't make it fall apart. Looks like it was glued into place. So I'm just going to peel it away. And then there's this little tie piece for the AC evaporator cord. I'm going to pull that out. And now I should be able to slide this off the rest of the way. So now I'm going to go around the perimeter and take out all the fasteners that are on here. screw on the side here that's a little bit different. That one actually kind of helps tie in the heater core so it's nice and secure inside the box. I'm just going to disconnect a couple vacuum hoses where it's separated. Pull out the rest of these two snap clips right here. And now this foam gasket that goes around here where the blower motor is, we're going to have to peel that at least halfway around so that way we can have the cases separate. So once again, just be very careful with this so we're not ripping the foam too much. So now our box should be a little bit loose. There we go. Just gonna carefully pull the top off of here. Looks like I got a vacuum line going down below, but I'm just gonna set this on the other side over here. We got this little gasket piece right here. It just goes into two halves, so we can lift straight up. We can take out our evaporator core. As you can see, it's falling apart. I've actually found some of this stuff in there um, that was in my heater vents. Then we got our main culprit right here. This is our heater core. Let's lift this out of here. And that guy is not looking too good. Definitely leaking. Yeah, you can see antifreeze right there, or it's just must have had some sort of pinhole leak that just developed over time. All right, so with our main components removed, we're pretty much at the halfway point for this. As you can see in here, it is gross and nasty. We got antifreeze leaking on the bottom, a bunch of dirt and everything. So do yourself a favor, clean this out the best you can because this is the air that you breathe. All this stuff is just going into your lungs if you're not uh, going to clean this out. So I'm going to take an extra 15 minutes, clean this up really nice, and then we'll be back to install our new components. All right, so I got my HVAC box all cleaned up on the inside. Just went and hosed it out um, for the most part and just kind of cleaned it up with some uh, detail cleaner in here. Cleaned it up um, the best I could. Um, so a piece that we're going to be reusing is this styrofoam piece down here where our AC evaporator core kind of sits down. So you want to make sure you don't break that because it's basically just styrofoam, very delicate. Um, cleaned it up the best I could. It was completely black before. I don't know if it's mold or whatnot, but that's as best as I can get it. And then we got our new evaporator core right here that comes with a foam strip that you can customize and put it on there and kind of fill in the gap between the evaporator core and the box so that way you have no air leakage so I went and already test fit it a little bit double layered on the back put a little bit of strip on the bottom kind of how the old one was used to have this foam gasket on the bottom of the old evaporator core and then I had some extra foam gasket laying around that I put right here because that was another big gap so this guy we're going to set down into place so it's kind of a nice tight seal that I made it so it's a little bit tight getting it in. There we go. Sits down in there. 
Now that's installed. Now I'll take our new heater core right here, make sure the foam around the perimeter is nice and tight and secure. And we have this little drop-in piece right here that kind of has this little hook that latches onto there, sets right in there. And you can take this and kind of put it on the heater core and install these two together into the pocket. I know the fitment on this heater core isn't exactly right. You might have to do a little tweaking, but just kind of push that into place and kind of line up. This is where a fastener hole is going to be, so make sure you kind of get that in the correct position, just like so. Now there's this little ring that pops out, but has some grooves in here where we're going to drop this into place. This is for the fan motor. Now we got this rubber gasket for the evaporator core. Should maybe put this half on first for the underside. Maybe we have to lift that a little bit. Sneak this in here, push that down, push this back into place. And then we'll put the other half just on, just like that. All right, so now we're pretty much at the point where we can put the top half back onto this box. A couple of things to make note is we have the blend door right here. We want to make sure this sits into the pocket on the corresponding cover, as well as we got this door down here that kind of sits in a slow pocket. We just want to make sure it sits into place when we put that top on since it doesn't like to fully sit down once it's loose. So just keep that in mind. Should be down like that. So now I'll take this, set it back down on top. You can stick your hand in the box here if you're having trouble lining up that blend door. And also make sure your ring that we talked about lines up as well. Check on all sides. All right, got that to clip down. It was just that blend door that's getting hung up. Just stuck my finger in there, moved it, wiggled it a little bit, and it popped right into that recessed groove. So now I'm gonna take all of our screws and start going around the perimeter and get in this box nice and tight. I got this longer screw that goes into where that little hole is for the heater core to hold that in place. Make sure I see that hole on the other side, then I'll thread this through. And there we go. All right, so now we're ready for the new blower motor. I'm actually going to put a little adhesive on this old gasket since I don't have a new one. It just kind of helps that hold it into place. So I got some 3M Super 77. Let that tack up a bit, and then we'll set that into place. We got a new blower motor. I want to make sure that the electrical connector, who is facing off to the right, so we're going to clock this in here, and then screw it into place. So that's a problem. Why is that touching? The hamster cage on the flywheel on this thing, so the fan blade, it seems to be rubbing. Pop this out, see what's going on. So I got that squirrel cage moving in there without rubbing against anything. The problem that I had with that new one is that the squirrel cage was not set onto the motor shaft all the way fur enough. Um, there's actually a bigger gap in between the motor housing and the squirrel cage. So I just took a uh, socket that fit over this and gently tapped it into place on the new one and got that 
um, to pretty much where it matches on this. Just a little bit of a gap. Nothing crazy because you don't want to crack that since it's plastic, but I was able to press it a little bit more. Now I can stick my hand in here. It moves nice and freely without rubbing on anything. So that's all taken care of there. Over here, we're going to finish this up by putting this gasket on over here. On the new evaporator cord, they have these block off plates, and that's because when they ship any AC components like this, normally they fill them with nitrogen so that way, um, um, that way it keeps the inside from being uncontaminated by moisture or anything like that for your AC system and then also it ensures that it's uh, not going to leak as well. So I'm going to undo this and we should uh, be able to undo these plugs and there will be a little bit of nitrogen that comes out. There we go, perfect. Now if you don't get that, if you don't have any nitrogen when you pull off these plugs, I'd immediately just send back your evaporator core and get a new one because odds are it probably has a leak in it, either from shipping or manufacturing. I'm gonna keep those rubber plugs on there for now until it's time to hook up the lines again. But I'm gonna pull off these plates so that way they're not obstruction. So just like before, I'm just gonna put a little bit of uh, adhesive on here put our vacuum line in first there we go got a little over spray glue on there so I'll just clean that off before we put this on but other than that this box is all ready to get put back into the Jeep then we can start putting the rest of the interior back together all right so it's time to fit this box back in here so I'm going to weave it into place get all of our studs going through the firewall and route any wires around that we need to so first things first we got our blower motor harness I can plug it in once I get into the engine bay, but at least just route it on the top. I'm going to do that now. Got that pushed in. Now I'll go on the back side and get the nuts on the other side. All right, so make sure you got your vacuum line coming through here too. Going to mount our bracket back up on here as well. And since this uh, dryer for the air conditioner is on the same bracket. I'm just going to connect this at the same time. And then I already went ahead and replaced these O-rings about six months ago, so they should be fairly new for clipping this into place. But they're the original. I recommend replacing them. So I'll thread some nuts onto place. And then I did fix that one stud that uh, came out of the box instead of unscrewing from the firewall. I just put a vice grips on the back side and was able to unthread it and I thread it back to the box and then on these studs I put some anti seize on there so that way they don't corrode up again. Alright, got that box all mounted to the firewall there and I also got my AC lines hooked up. Kind of did that at the same time since this uh, dryer right here is utilizing the same bolts that are for the uh, HVAC box. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap up everything that's um, over here so that way we're done for pretty much underneath the hood so I'm going to go ahead and get our coolant lines hooked up onto here as well then we got our evap solenoid pop that onto there plug in our vacuum lines pretty much wrapped up all in here we'll go ahead on the inside and put the dashboard back into place all right so now we just need to plug everything back in the way it did for our blower resistor our relays that mounted back up here we have our blend door actuator wire over here as well and then we have a couple other little things and then we can put this dash back in. Now 
Then we got our little panel. We'll slide this back in here as well. All right, undo this from here. Scoot our dashboard in a little bit. Then if we can plug our vacuum connector in back over here, and then I can bolt in the dashboard and still be able to put the last antenna on there. So now I'm gonna kind of set our dashboard into place onto the studs for the alignment. All right, so I got our dashboard hooked back into place. It's resting on those studs that are on the top there. So I'm gonna go ahead and put all of our 10 millimeter fasteners on the top and get those secured into place. Then I'll work on the sides where our kick panel is. And then lastly, the bracket down here. And then this thing is firmly in place. Then it's just all the trim panels. I'm gonna get this steering column put back into place because it's driving me nuts. I just got those studs in the back. We'll line up first. There we have it. Interior is all back together. 
Now I'm gonna go and top off our coolant and then I can go ahead and charge our AC once again and test out everything and make sure it all works. Alright guys, before we wrap up this long video, I do want to mention today's video sponsor and that is by Nylite. Now Nylite has been making off-road LED lights for off-road vehicles for a long period of time. I remember buying them eight years ago and I still have them working to this day. So let's take a quick look at uh, the couple that they sent me here today. Um, we got a white LED and then we also have some amber LED which I'm actually going to be installing on my Jeep Cherokee. It's definitely going to help for winter snow driving as well. All right so out of the box I got these two lights right here. They do also make a kit where these come already pre-wired with a wiring harness so all you have to do is just basically connect it up to your battery and find a place where you want to mount your switch and then the way you go. I already have a wiring harness on my Jeep so all I have to do is just connect the leads onto here and then away I go. So it might be hard to tell but the one on the right is an amber light and the one on the left is a nice crisp white light. So with it being with the amber lights you don't have to worry about putting a cover over this which is pretty nice if you want to have the appearance of just normal white light on the outside. But I like how these are just a nice sleek design and they're going to fit good as a fog light or a spotlight no matter where you put it on your vehicle. Now all these lights do also come with the uh, hardware to install it. They have a nice bracket here so you can angle it exactly where you want it so so i'm going to get these amber ones installed in the jeep and then let's just quickly take a look and see how they perform all right guys as you can see i got the lights installed on my jeep cherokee and i think they'll look pretty slick in the factory fog light location now as you can see this is what they look like at night against the headlights and i think they look pretty slick so i want to thank nylite for sending out these lights for me to take a look at overall i'm very impressed use her products in the past with no issues at all so if you guys want to pick up a pair of these lights i got the link down in the description below all right guys there we have it for the teeter core install on this Jeep Cherokee. It's actually been a couple months since I installed this, so jumping into the future a little bit, and so far I have no issues with it. Puts off great heat as we're down into the 10s and 20s here in the Midwest, and it's doing great so far. As always, I'll post the links down in the description below for all the parts that I use in this video, as well as the other links that I mentioned earlier in the video. Now overall, this is going to be a very time-consuming project. I don't think it's too complicated, but it is very time-consuming, um, just having a lot of components to it. So if you plan on tackling this, I'd recommend get yourself at least a good afternoon, good Saturday afternoon, dedicate uh, four to six hours um, of your time, and you should be able to complete this job. So if you guys have any questions or comments, make sure to post them below, and I'll be happy to get back to you. If you guys found this video helpful, if you're doing this job on your own Jeep Cherokee, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button to the Out Jeeping YouTube channel. And if you guys want to help support the channel, I got some t-shirts and stickers down in the description below over at outjeeping.com. So I want to thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.